So one is saying, another is conditioned consciousness. But consciousness expresses as conditioned consciousness only when there is something called consciousness different from the conditioning and conditioned consciousness. I will repeat that statement again. Be alert. I'll give you an example first. Why don't you give that first, you know? Okay. So when I go in the bathroom and there is a mirror, right? And I stand in front of mirror. I have to say mirror is in bathroom because in my room there are no mirrors. It's only in the bathroom. So you, I will think only that way. So if I go there and I see that mirror, I see my reflection. Right? So I am there, mirror is there, and my reflection is there. Right? Now reflection for most purposes is taken as me only, as far as some activity I want to do. Right? If I want to comb my hair, put chandan, shave, all that, so I say that is me and I do my vyavahar. Right? Now, reflection is not possible without reflecting medium. Correct? So that mirror becomes the conditioning. And there is conditioned expression of this. In that condition. So mirror is the apara. And reflection is the para. And they both belong to me. Now, of course, examples will have limitations. Because mirror can stand independent of me. Right? But if I say I am existence consciousness, then mirror has no independent existence apart from me because the moment I say mirror exists, that existence is borrowed existence. And without mirror or without me, reflection is also not possible. Which means they both depend on I, the consciousness. And so what Bhagavan says here is, the experiencer and the experienced, they both belong to me. This, those who attended Prashno Prasha, Prana and Rai, they too were explained. So, the whole discussion began with only these two and later on, it came to Shodasha Kala Purusha. So, when we study these texts as student, we should be able to resolve, oh, in Upanishad, this is where it comes. And we should be able to reconcile everything. So in Eightfold Nature, every matter is covered. Nothing is left out, right? Because five elements and total mind, total intellect, total ahankara, so nothing is remaining now. The only thing that is remaining is this jiva for whom this prakriti is. Right? Prakriti is for what? Is for jiva's karmas and bhogas. If jiva who has karta bhava is going to do karma, other than karta, what does he need? All the other material. Who is going to provide? Aparaprakriti. Correct? Jiva has bhokta bhava, idea of experiencer. Who is going to provide bhoga? Aparaprakriti. Clear? 
so that is why Bhagavan says these two they make everything and then he says this Paraprakriti is sustaining or it holds this Aparaprakriti which means it is this Jiva and his karmas they decide what has to appear when, where, how. Everything of Aparaprakriti doesn't show up any time, anywhere. It is dictated by the karmas of this Jiva. So this Jiva Bhuta Prakriti, that is going to decide all these things. That's why we say, this person came at this time, that person went from here, you know, in history. So all that is based on whose karmas are ready, now he is there. Those whose karmas are over, departure. So based on them, those karmas, jivas, they experience aparaprakriti or use Aparaprakriti. Now, somebody may say, oh, both are Bhagavan, you are Prakritis. Why do you call one as Para and one as Apara? Not Apsara, Apara. <laughs> Why do you say that? So, Bhagavan says, because one has expression of consciousness. Life is expressed in one, in para, in apara it is not. Even though it is mine, it is not expressed. This is one thing. Second thing is, apara is the cause of bondage. It creates bandhana. Simplest example. When we are sitting here, if we say, you think of some person, what do we think of? Their apara aspect or para aspect? Apara aspect, their body only we will think. Right? That's why our attachment is to what? Apara aspect. So what puts us in bandhana? Apara aspect. Even mind, intellect, everything, still it falls in upper only. And therefore it is Mandhanakarta. Not because Bhagavan wanted it, because we are not able to discriminate it. If you can understand, this is the expression of God right here, there is no problem. So, these are my two prakritis. Now, Bhagavan is going to further clarify, I am the origin of both. Even though he mentioned me para, me aparam, but now further he is going to explain that you will see in the next class. And then Bhagavan is also going to talk about some of his vibhutis in this chapter itself. We will see that. In